All right, so we're going to pick up where we left last time. Uh, last time I was doing this example of matching phone numbers, and we got pretty close, right? We're able to grab all these numbers. Uh, one tricky case was when I have a phone number like this. Um, it's definitely not a valid phone number, but there is a valid phone number contained within it. And so this is one of the limitations of uh, regular expressions, right? It, it's kind of ignoring that we have uh, these differences before and after. And so there's actually a way to work around this, and it's a negative look behind assertion. And uh, you can basically assert things like, I want to match a valid phone number that doesn't look like it's following right after some digits or dashes. Um, I'm not going to cover that in, in class and, or ever expect you to know it. But if you were trying to deal with something like this, uh, well, that's what you would look into. So to summarize from last time, if I head over here to, um, to my slides, um, these are some tables from that reading I, I, I gave you. And so it makes sense to look over these on some level. Um, and so you can kind of remember what different meta characters are available, um, what they correspond to. And, um, and then also all of these other patterns, like what is a, how is a character class represented? Um, what are star plus? These are the two non-greedy equivalents that don't really get covered that well. So make sure you know those as well. So we've been kind of working in this debug mode where we can just see what's matching. But what we'd actually like to do in Python is somehow uh, pull out what we match. And so for that, we're going to be importing the RE module, which stands for, re for regular expression. Uh, that comes built into Python. And uh, it has a lot of different functions in it and uh, that do different things, right? Some of them are just searching, some are replacing. And if you were to just learn two of them, I think the two would be find all and substitute, right? So those are the two I'm going to teach here. You probably want to, on your own time, maybe look at some other ones if you ever need this for a project. And so they're very similar to the thing we've been doing, especially find all. Um, find all takes in an expression, my regular expression, and then the string, and then it's going to return a list of that. A substitute takes in a pattern what we'd like to replace it to, and then the string that we'd like to do the replacement on. So in this case, when I do find all, I'm gonna get a list of all the digit groups in here, right? So I'm gonna pull out this, I'm gonna pull out 14, and I guess I have a typo there, that's 14, seven, uh, 41, 1000, and then, and then 320. It'll pull those all things all out, out as strings. And then over here, it's basically censoring it. It's replacing all digits, whether it's one digit or, or five digits, it's replacing those with these three pound signs. So it's just blocking out those numbers. Now, one of the things we're often going to want to do when we find a pattern is pull out something specific. So for example, maybe I'm interested in looking for cases where I have a number and then some sort of word after it, right? Number, word. And if I do that, then I can pull out um, uh, what what that number is, right? And so the way we'll do that is with parentheses. Parentheses can have, mean different things. One of them means that I have a group uh, within the regular expression, right? So this would be group one, and then this would be group two, like so. And then if I run that, what will happen is I'll, instead of getting a list of strings, I'm gonna get a list of tuples because uh, each tuple is showing me those two parts, right? And so this is you know the number, and this is the word. And by doing that, I could actually loop over and I could very quickly find out how many, uh, what, what the number is on different kinds of work. And of course, I'd want to probably do some filtering to avoid tricky stuff like that. Um, if I want to still get the whole thing, there's no reason I can't have nested groups, right? So I could put a parenthesis around all of this. And then in that case, the first group is the whole thing, like so. And then the two smaller groups are other places in the tuple, right? So I have three parentheses here representing the three groups, and that's why I have three entries uh, in each tuple um, down below. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this other one. Um, let's say I went through and I wanted to clean up something like this. I wanted to uh, do a replacement. Wherever I have like two spaces or a tab or a new line, if I have any kind of weird garbage like that, I just want a single space. You can imagine lots of reasons that might be helpful uh, for just regularizing the, the format. So if I do that, I say I want to substitute strings of any length, single space like that, and then I'll convert this ugly string uh, to this right down here. And that works just fine. Well, something that's very tricky is that sometimes when I'm doing the replace, maybe I still want to reference the thing that got matched. 
And, um, and, and so for example, imagine that this string was HTML and I'm trying to put a bold tag around each number. So technically I don't want to just replace the number with something else. I want to replace the number with itself plus some bold tags around it. And, and so the way we do that is we say backslash G for group and then the brackets we say one. So this is group one and that would refer back to here. You, you, you notice it's kind of weird how we number these things. Um, when I was looking at the tuple, uh, this was at position zero in the tuple, but most documentation will actually refer to this as, as group one. And in here I'm referring to group one, right? So whenever I have a number, I'm replacing it with that number plus some bold tags around it in HTML. So I, I'd run that and I'd get something like this. And then ultimately I might get some content like this that just makes all the numbers pop out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna head back to the uh, notebook and, uh, and do some examples here. So let me head over here and pull up my examples. And, um, and so I'm gonna do that first example to more completion where I have string three and I actually wanna pull out all of these numbers, right? So what I'll do is I'll say, um, I'll say import re and then I will say, uh, let me see here we will say find all on it, right? So I want to do something like this. I want to say re.findall, and then I want to have my pattern, and then, and then my, uh, my text, which is in this case, just S3 uh, is my string. And so my pattern, uh, for starters, maybe we could just look for all digits, right? So I do that. And now you actually see something that was a little bit hard to see before, which is, uh, before when we were matching things, and I'd highlight all this, it's hard to tell if that's one group or three different groups. Um, here, here when I see I'm doing this, I, I get a lot of groups, right? I'm matching all of them, but they're all their own digit. So if I say something like plus, well, now I'll actually uh, get the individual things I want. If I said plus question mark, well, it would go back to being small because each group would be matching as little as possible. So I do that, I can actually get all the different numbers pulled out of this list. And of course, everything with uh, that we're dealing with is a string, so I'd have to um, convert that to an integer before I could go, go further. Um, if I put a tuple, or I'm sorry, if I put a parentheses around this to make it a group, well, it would be doing the same thing because um, I, I only have one group. Um, if, however, I add in another group where I'm looking for word characters, you can see that I get the number, and then I get this over here, right? So I, I have a number, and then this piece. So what I could do is I could try to actually capture all of this in, in a dictionary. Right? You can see that this is drawing right here. Um, I, I could say something like this. I could say, um, maybe I'll, I'll just put it in, in multiple cells. I'll have my groups there. I could say for T and groups, um, then I could print that thing, right? that tuple. Um, I could also, if I want, is, is to automatically unbox that. So I could, if I wanted to, since I know there's two pieces in each tuple, uh, I could say count and then uh, and then uh, uh, maybe event, right? So then I could print these things separately, the count and the event in each case. And uh, then you can imagine I, I could pretty easily have a dictionary where what I'm doing is, is actually like this. I could say d of event um, equals int of count, right? I could do something like that. And then I'm all done and I have this dictionary. And, and then it would be very easy, right? You can imagine that I could run this regular expression on a lot of different people's syllabuses. And then I could very easily say something like, well, how many quizzes does this course have? How many, um, how many uh, projects does it have? That kind of thing, I can very easily analyze and, and figure out what, what is going on. Okay, so let's try to do the substitution. Um, and, and so I'm gonna try to ultimately make this font bold around the numbers, right? So I have my S3 again, and I can do an RE, RE dot sub, and, and I can have a pattern, and I have something I replace it with, and then I have my, my text that I'm working on. And so my text here is S3, and um, let's say my pattern again is digits. So I may say R uh, digits, and I'll, I'll replace those with, let's just say a pound sign for now. So I was able to wipe all those out. Um, what I can also do is I could replace it with that group if I wanted to. I could say slash G, and I can say I want to replace it with group one. 
And I, I think it's actually unhappy because I need to do this, right? Let me, what does it say down here? Invalid group reference. Yeah, so it's not finding the group. So maybe if I do that, well, now it's actually doing it. And so really I'm kind of doing nothing here. I'm replacing every number with itself, but that gives me an opportunity, right? I mean, I could put, uh, I could put whatever I wanted around it. Let me just like put some, well, not that, something, uh, maybe some exclamation marks around every number. If I do that, and, and you can see I'm just, uh, I'm adding these around each number that I found, right? And, and so this gives me that opportunity if I'm dealing with HTML to replace it with something more interesting, right? I can replace it with say, a uh, bold font. And so I'm gonna do that. And uh, and that's pretty cool, right? I'm, I'm adding these bold tags here, like so. And, um, and so if I wanted to, what I could actually do is I could generate this HTML where it's starting with a plain string and then just putting bold around all the tags. And then if I wanted to, I, I could display that. And, uh, and to do that, I have to say, from ipython.core.display uh, import HTML. And, uh, and then I could create an HTML element and, and remember just how this works. Um, it, it works something like this. Right, I can put whatever I want in there. Um, in this case, I'm gonna put that HTML that I generated and, and now I get this beautiful string where I have bold um, for, for all the numbers that, that are there. Um, okay, cool. So I will uh, leave off there and, um, and we'll do more practice next time.